Hey, I want to ask you about um, DeAndre Swift and I, I guess what's impressed you the most about the way he plays the game and prepares for the game, what, you, what you've seen. I just think, um, you know, he, he's a, he's a big-time player with the ball in his hands, and he showed that throughout his whole career. And to have the opportunity to play with him and seeing him enjoying and being back home and playing um, in his homeland, um, it's, it's fun. Yeah, this Jets defense was kind of being Super Bowl ready. What sets it apart from some of the other defenses that you've seen this year? I think they're really good defense. They're they coached well. They fly to the ball. They have a really good front seven, and they have um, elite, elite players on the perimeter. And so um, this is another great challenge for us. When you have a quarterback like Sauce Gardner out on the outside, how do you – balance that of being aggressive, trying to go to your receivers on that side he's going to versus, you know, trying to maybe stay in the way? He's a, he's a great player. You know, you just want to go out there and kind of control what you can and just execute uh, the fundamentals of whatever the play is called. I know AJ obviously had a really great season last year, but these last three games the production has been pretty great. Are there things he's doing better now than, than you've seen him do before? Um, Yeah, I think he's just kind of, you know, eager and um, re really reinforcing the details within his game and challenging himself to do that and us being on the same page um, and communicating effectively and all of that. And so, you know, we, we just – we all want to kind of take those steps and, you know, I think he's been able to, you know, he's been able to show up when his number's been called. How, how important was it to get Dallas kind of, you know, a little bit more on track this week to give defense something more to uh, plan for? Yeah, I – you know, I think um, I think that's the beauty of this offense is you have, you have so many different people that you have to account for, um, and, and that's always the goal out there. So, you know, if a guy has not maybe had any opportunities or maybe has not, you know, produced in a certain type of way, that doesn't mean you can't account for him. So um, we have a lot of well-respected players, and we just all want to get better every day. At this point in your career, have, have you found – like the Sunday, the Sunday rhythm that you like for, for how you want the Monday to be, Tuesday to be, Wednesday to be, and so forth? It's an evolving thing. I think it changes with time. But, you know, I always want to make sure I cross my T's and dot my I's in terms of my preparation and meet with those who I need to meet with. And I'm just going to the game, uh, hoping to be best prepared to do my job. Darren, how well have you gotten to know Quinn Williams both? your time in college and now having the same agent, and, and what stands out to you about his abilities on the field? Yeah, Quinn has um, always been a, a great player. I remember even our time at Alabama. Um, he didn't come in and play right away, yet when he had his opportunity, he took off like a rocket. And um, he's kind of been, you know, blazing his own trail ever since. So much respect to him as a player and as a person. Yeah. On, on uh, Sunday, we expect Jason Kelsey to start again, and that would set a franchise record for consecutive starts to 145. Um, what level of dedication does it take to play, especially his position, that many games in, our, in succession? That's big. That's big. Um, that's big. Um, I haven't even really thought about that, didn't know about that, but um, he shows up and um, he does what needs to be done to be ready to play. and. Um, he's, he's a mentally tough person. In general, with the offensive line, you have all these pieces who have been together for a really long time. Uh, how, how much does that show up when you're in a game and you're seeing them kind of correct things and make changes on the fly? Yeah, I think um, it's just a matter of all we, us always communicating, you know, and you see these things and, um, you know, the, the most important thing we have to on the field is everybody being on the same page, and I think um, – they have great leadership in that room with Coach Stout, and um, I think for us it's just about doing that. I asked you before the Patriots game about kind of preparing for a non-traditional opponent. Um, and I know you guys played the Jets two years ago. I believe you, you missed that game. What's a week like when it, it's, it's not a scheme that you're used to seeing in your game yet, or I should say season in, season out? Well, it's the same. You, you want to have the same diligence, um, the same – um, steadiness, same eagerness to, to learn and um, and grow. I think, you know, just just learning as much as I can about them. But they're they're really good defense. I mean, a really good team, a really good team, and they're coached by a great coach. So um, we got a, we got a tough challenge in front of us. How impressive was it to you what Sua was able to do coming in a right guard 
Uh, he'd only started one game at right guard, I think five other games in his, in his career. Uh, what did he show you? He showed me what he's always shown, um, shown us. You know, every time he has an opportunity, he steps in and he does the most of it. So uh, much credit, much credit to him. A point that Nick made um, speaking to us the other day was that Quez's presence cannot always be seen on the stat sheet because of what he can do for the right now. Um, from your perspective, what, what value does Quez provide that maybe the naked eye doesn't see? I'm, I'm not sure what you guys see or don't see, but, um, you know, I think there's merit to what Coach is saying. You know, you, you have to respect a guy like that with his speed. And <clears throat> obviously, if you're not, we want to take advantage of it. We're not on the sideline and able to feel it the way you guys obviously do. That seemed, from the broadcast version, like a uh, more highly emotional game than maybe I would have expected. A lot of shots of guys, whether they're celebrating or really letting out emotion one way or the other. Is that a fair assessment of that game? And if so, do you have a reason why? Um, I think it's, you know, I think it's what was captured. Whatever was captured was captured. I don't think it was any different than the regular game. Take a few more. Have you gotten used to, to Nick's demeanor and his, his emotional, um, his, his showing of emotions during games? I have. There we go. Going forward with it? That's my coach. Uh, he, um, you spoke about the red zone a bit after the game. In, in your time this past few days, what have you learned kind of little, about what can be done to improve in that area? It's just efficiency in what we're doing. It's just executing. Um, just going out there and executing. And um, obviously can't have any penalties. Um, put yourself back, set yourself back in that area of the field. But, you know, we're scoring the red zone. You know, I think these games are um, a lot different, you know, and I think that's a, 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 an exciting thing because you know that there's so much more that you can do. And, um, you know, I think we're, we're doing a lot of things at a high level, but there, there's so much more to go. And we're not satisfied with none of that. And you got to keep on going. You know, you have to challenge yourself to, to truly be one to know every day, try and win the day and just try and better yourself and um, chase that constant growth. And so... Um, as a team, you know, situationally, fundamentally, um, all the little details in our game, we just want to continue to grow at it. You know, we just want to continue to grow. It's a long season.